Hello, I'm Brett Knowles from PM2 Consulting. This short vignette provides an overview of the five types of scorecards, or in fact, the five types of performance indicators we've observed in organizations. Overall, if you think of a strategy map or a balanced scorecard, there are effectively five types of questions the leadership team might ask of this measurement tool. One is valuation. How do we better value the business to communicate the value of intangible and tangible assets to the marketplace? A second view is navigation. How do I make decisions day to day, month to month to help me navigate the organization? An example is in my consulting business, I found there's a relationship between my cell phone bill and revenue about two months in the future. The benefit of this for me as a navigation tool is that proxy for customer communication works well to guide me towards the activities I need to do to continue the business flow of the company. But it gives me enough lead time that I can organize adding staff to support an increase in demand. Now obviously that's a great navigational metric but not very useful for valuing the business. A third type of question you might have is around compensation. How do I make sure people are compensated for things which are linked to the strategic objectives? Now, I actually need a different metric for this. Obviously, if I, inside my consulting firm, compensated my consultants for cell phone minutes, I'm going to drive the wrong behavior. Their mothers and significant others will be happy, but not necessarily their boss. A fourth type is calibration. How do I calibrate my business against others? Now, it's important that I understand what the strategy is to make this calibration. I could compare a fine downtown restaurant to, say, McDonald's. They're both in the same business, but because their strategy is different, I can't calibrate the downtown restaurant against all attributes and aspects of McDonald's, and vice versa. It's important that we understand the strategy so we compare the right things. And then finally, evaluation. Once a year, we need to apply some hard science to understand how the business is performing. This is where you do your employee surveys and customer surveys to give you quantifiable hard metrics on the organization. The problem is we can't get that data frequently enough to make effective management decisions. And secondly, it's costly that often these elements get dropped early in financially constrained times. So, and more importantly, the evaluation metrics allow us to validate the metrics we've been using for navigation and so forth. But each of these views requires a different sort of metric. So, for example, we could actually take a strategy map and think of the strategy map as transcending time, but each of these performance metrics being used in different applications of that strategy map. So, for example, if we took the strategy map and listed the objectives down the left, we could list these five types of strategy maps across the top and begin to determine what indicators would work in each context. Let's take an example. If we take a look at, say, customer intimacy, what we'll see is for a valuation view, we might want to take a, a customer lifetime revenue value equation to sort out the valuation relationship of customer intimacy. On the other hand, navigation, to make decisions moment to moment about whether we're working closely enough with our customers, I might want to use a more dynamic indicator like the number of customer contacts, things like emails, voicemails, visits. Those things are going to give me an ongoing and very reactive trend of how we're doing on customer intimacy. Whereas for compensation, I'm going to need a more outcome metric, something like customer retention rates or customer attraction rates. Maybe to calibrate or benchmark my organization, I'm going to take a common metric like customer turnover. Now, that doesn't tell me how intimate I am with my customers, but it's kind of indicative, and I can get that data from industry associations and so forth. Finally, for evaluation, we're going to do our employee survey or customer survey. This allows us to do a more comprehensive study of what's going on, but again, we can't do it all that frequently. Now, these are concepts around performance indicators. You can learn much more by going to pm2consulting.com.